Hello, welcome back to Modern Algebra Made Easy series by me, Scott Hader. And today we're going to be talking about orbits and cycles. And so, just to give a kind of review, not really a review, but just so you can see the difference between what we're talking about and what we talked about, permutations are, well, here's an example, basically a shift in some numbers. Orbits, what we're talking about today, you can see that 1 and 5 go between one another. So it's the set of numbers that kind of go back and forth, more or less, to kind of simplify it a bit. And 3 and 4 as well. 2 and 6, they're always the same. So they're own, their own sets. So orbits are subsets of the elements of, in the permutation. And cycles are the order at which those numbers go back and forth. So 1 and 5 here in the orbit, in the set, that doesn't necessarily show the order. <coughs> of course, 1 and 5, it doesn't matter. But if there are three numbers, it does matter the order. Anyway, we'll talk more about that in a little while. So just another example. Here's another permutation. And in this case, the orbit is the whole set. Remember I just said that orbits are subsets of the permutation's elements. In this case, the whole permutation is cyclic, in a sense. I don't think we say, we use that term necessarily, but you can think of it like that, because each element cycles through the whole, cycles through all the elements in the permutation. So, and that's easy to show because the cycle, in this case. <coughs> is the whole is the whole set in the permutation. So in this case the permutation would be a cycle because we can write the permutation as one cycle. So I'm going to say that over and over again so if it's fuzzy now don't worry cuz I'll get it I'll get it through to you. So a couple terms so permutation once more is more or less a shift of numbers <coughs> in some way. Orbits are subsets of the permutation, cycle through one another, and cycles show the order of the orbits. And a couple things to note. Or orbits cannot be permutations or cycles. Remember, orbits are subsets. They're not they're not permutations and they're not they don't they don't show order they're just subsets that's all they are permutations however can be cycles if they can be written as one cycle I'll show that again so don't worry so we're going to do an example here find all the orbits of the permutation and you see that 1 2 and 5 go between one another and remember, orbits are subsets, so we just need to write the set 1, 2, and 5. <coughs> Similarly, 3 and 4 and 6 as well. So orbits are sets, so we just need to write those three subsets of the elements here. And those are the orbits. So another problem, compute the product of cycles of the set, 1 through 8. So here's the product. And remember, it's just like the last video, we have a composition here. So we got to do this right to left. So 2 goes to 5, and if you look here on our final composition, 5 goes to 1. So cycles go 1, 4, 5, 1, 4, 5, and so forth. They just cycle back and through. So that's how we read them. 2 goes to 5, and 5 goes to 1. So 2 goes to 1. 1 goes to 4. 4 is only in our final composition, and it goes to 5. 8 is in our second permutation, is in our second cycle, and 8 goes to 7. And since 7 is not used in our final computation here, that's all, that's 8 just goes to 7. And if you look on our first composition, 7 goes to 2 and 2 is not used anywhere else. 
So remember, we read these right to left. Then you'll be good. So, this permutation here, and it is a permutation, I'll show you. It looks like this. Because 1 goes to 4, 2 goes to 1, and so forth. 3 and 6 say the same. So it's a permutation, and look, we can write it as one cycle. So it's a cycle. I hope that's starting to make sense. If it can be written as once, as if it can be written as a cycle, it's a cycle. If it can be written as one cycle, it's a it's a cycle. If it can't be written as one one cycle, if it can, if, it, if you need two or more, then it's not a cycle. So another problem: express the permutation as a product of disjoint cycles, and then a product of transposition. So here's the permutation we're given. And you see that 1, 3, and 4 go between one another, 2 and 6, and 5, 7, and 8. So we write it like this. 1 goes to 3, which goes to 4, which goes to 1. 2 and 6 go between one another, 5, 8, and 7, and then 5 again. So order does matter when we're writing cycles. We can't write 5, 7, 8 here, numerical order. We could, however, write 8, 7, 5. That's no problem, as long as we get the order correct. It doesn't matter what's lowest, uh, greatest, and so forth. So, so now it asks us to write this as a product of transpositions. Well, a transposition is a cycle of length 2. So our result is going to have a bunch of cycles of length 2. This is a cycle of length 3. So you can see that we did that here. And the way this reads is 5 goes to 8. <coughs> Eight's not used anywhere else, so 5 better go to 8, which it does. 8 goes to 5, and in our composition, 5 goes to 7. So 8 should go to 7, which it does. And it works all the way through. So hope you can just kind of study that and kind of kind of intuitively grasp uh, the way in which we write those. It's not too bad, I don't think. We'll do one more. Uh, doing this this final cycle here, we see that 1 goes to 3, which it does. 3 goes to 1, and in our final composition, 1 goes to 4. So 3 actually goes to 4, which it does. Anyway, you can just remember that the, f the first element here we use twice. Okay, so let's move on. True or false questions? Every permutation is a cycle. What do you think? It's false. Remember, only if it can be written as one cycle is it a permutation. Sorry, only is it a is it a cycle? Only if it can be written as one cycle. Is it a cycle? So, example here. We can write this permutation as a cycle. So it's a cycle. The permutation is a cycle. But this one, we have to write this permutation as two cycles. So it's not a cycle. It's two cycles. Every cycle is a permutation. What do you think? It's true. I'll give you an example here. 3, 4. The only thing that changes are 3 and 4. Everything else stays the same. So we can express this as a permutation. And we can always do that. No problem. Okay. So, proof time. I believe this is our final piece of the lecture today. And show that if sigma is a cycle of odd length, sigma squared is a cycle. So, Remember, a cycle looks like this. And in this case, it's going to A, the final number, which we're defining as a positive odd integer. Because it's got to have odd length. So sigma squared is a composition of functions. 
and if you'll notice, 1 goes to 2, and 2 goes to what? 3, right? And then 3 is going to go to 4, and then 4 is going to go to 5. So we're going to have 1, 3, 5, and so forth, all the way up to A, the odd, the highest odd number. And then A, if we look here, A goes to 1, and 1 goes to 2, doesn't it? So we're going to start over, over at 2, and then 4, and then 6, and that's going to go all the way to A minus 1. So we've expressed this product as a cycle, so it's a cycle. That's it. I didn't write my QED, dang it. Anyway, that's all for today's lecture. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you got something out of it. And feel free to leave any questions, comments, anything. Just let me know. And see you next time.